Hello, welcome to video five of the 2402 lecture, Blood Vessels. This will be a short one. So this talks about disorders with your blood pressure, so homeostatic imbalances, as we've seen before. Two basic things, you can be too high or it can be too low, right? So hypertension is too high, hyper, like hyperactive is too much activity, hypothermia is too low of temperature, too low of heat. So hypertension is if you have uh, uh, 140 over 90 or greater, and this has to be chronic. Uh, this will really tire out your heart and your blood vessels, so not good for you as a long-term uh, solution. Hypertension can either be what they call primary, which is most of the cases where it's gonna be the disorder is your hypertension, right? And the underlying cause can be uh, hereditary or if you, uh, have a really poor diet, usually a combination of all, a lot of these. Uh, if you're obese, older people tend to have a more hypertension. If you've got diabetes, which can be related to these things. Uh, if you're very stressful, stressed out, not stress smoking, it should say stress comma smoking. I'll have to fix that. Uh, secondary hypertension is if you have a real obvious disorder which is causing a direct increase in blood pressure. So if you've got kidney disease and you get a kidney transplant, uh, if you had hypertension below that, before that, and the kidney disease was the cause, you're likely not to have as severe of hypertension afterwards. And hyperthyroidism, if you can get that treated, the hypertension should go down. Hypotension, low blood pressure, 90 over 60 or lower. This one's not usually as bad for you unless it's causing failure to get blood to your brain or to certain organs. Uh, chronic hypotension is generally better than chronic hypertension, like I said, unless you're passing out all the time and banging your head on stuff. Now, acute hypotension is a, uh, a symptom of what they call shock. So if you've ever heard somebody say they're going into shock, it's not like they're like, <gasps> that's not the shock we're talking about. Circulatory shock is what we're talking about. So circulatory shock can be due to in one of these three main reasons, hypovolemic low volume, Right, so if you're bleeding, dehydrated from whatever, uh, that can be hypovolemic. You're, you're, you need more liquid in your blood, uh, or blood in your blood in this case. Vascular shock, and that's if the blood vessels dilate. So if you're, let's say you've got uh, a gallon of milk in a gallon jug, the jug's pretty full. If you suddenly turn that gallon jug into a five gallon jug, same amount of milk doesn't fill it. So the pressure goes way down. Uh, if you have anaphylaxis, which is a uh, nervous, I'm sorry, a nervous reaction, allergic reaction, uh, neurogenic shock, so some 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 uh, vasodilation generated by your brain, or septic shock due to infection. Lastly, cardiogenic shock, that's if your heart's just not beating fat hard enough, right? Remember how cardiac output and blood pressure are directly related? So if cardiac output goes way down, you've got damaged heart muscle or it's weak, uh, it's going to cause a, a decrease in uh, blood pressure. Pretty simple.